wasn't exactly the Beatles arriving at JFK Airport, but a couple of superstars did touch down in Toronto yesterday and caused quite a scene. However, two panda bears on loan from China will be kept under wraps and only unveiled to the public in May. Prime Minister Stephen Harper was clearly pleased when he officially signed for the delivery of five-year-old Urshan and four-year-old Dameo, who arrived on the Panda Express. That's a panda-decorated FedEx plane. Their arrival marks the re realization of a deal reached when Harper visited China just over a year ago and is seen as a symbol of a significant thaw in diplomatic relations between the two countries. Joining us today at Queen's Park is Nick Wright. He's the executive director of Animal Justice Canada. Nick, is the practice of loaning out pandas to zoos around the world uh, actually helping pandas in the wild, or is China simply using uh, panda bears as a, a tool for trade? Well, first off, Mark, let me start by saying that everyone loves pandas. They're adorable. They're hilarious. But what breaks my heart is seeing these majestic creatures hauled across the world outside of their habitat to be kept in a cage here in Toronto and then Calgary. And these claims that it's somehow for the best for the pandas is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, so to give context, currently uh, there are about 1,600 or so pandas remaining in the bamboo forests in China where they're from. And since 1937, we've seen that in captivity, there's been approximately uh, 51 panda births, but 60 panda deaths. Pandas don't breed in captivity, it's just the way that it is. So these claim that this is anything other than an attempt to raise publicity, to provide entertainment, and to make money for the zoos is absolutely ludicrous. Well, the zoo definitely is hoping it will make money. I think they, they're investing $20 million in the pandas, and we'll have to wait and see if it helps the Toronto Zoo's bottom line. But do you think that, uh, in general, the, the attendance at zoos is dropping because people uh, generally sort of take the, the position that you do and that the animals are being used solely for the purpose of entertainment? Well, I hope so. A number of months ago, I had the, the misfortune, perhaps, of attending the Toronto Zoo for a meeting that was being held there. And afterwards, I saw the polar bears in captivity, and it was absolutely heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. These incredible animals trapped in this tiny little pen just sitting around. So it's no wonder to me that, uh, in the case of panda bears, they don't breed in captivity. These are animals that traverse through the forest, go all over the place, eat bamboo. It's a very different environment than we see in these tiny little pens. So I think that it's... Uh, heartbreaking and tragic and I hope that that's the case that people aren't going to zoos. If people love pandas, care about pandas, want to learn about pandas, let's do it online, let's do it through video, let's have nature documentaries, let's work to protect the habitat that panda bears in the wild rely upon in order to promulgate the species. Okay so now the kids are, that are watching this show or have seen you know these shots of the pandas, they're saying to their parents you know I want to go see them live, take me to the zoo. Years ago, my kids, when they saw the Komodo dragon, found out that the Komodo dragon was coming to the Toronto Zoo, bugged me every single day until I had to take them. This is a bit of a problem here because this PR, uh, you know, it, you, you get kids to go and, and adults to go, look how cute they are, we got to go see them. Well, absolutely. And again, everyone does love pandas, of course, they're adorable. But this can be a learning opportunity to teach young people that keeping wild animals in captivity harms the animals and that we should express compassion, have love for all creatures, and not support this cruel practice that is nothing but a cash draft grab, nothing for human entertainment, and doesn't in any material way go to support uh, panda bears in the wild. Okay, so, but how do, you, how, do you, how do you say that to a kid? Uh, uh, you want to educate people. You want them not to go to the zoo as a protest. You want them to find out online or through books or through anecdotal uh, about panda bears. Well, how do you say that to a kid? Well, Mark, I'm not suggesting that parenting is easy. Far from it. What I'm saying is that this is a learning opportunity, and rather than uh, promoting what's harming the pandas that we all care about and love, uh, use this as a learning opportunity uh, for young people to say, we're not going to support the zoo, we're not going to support the captivity of wildlife. Let's learn about pandas in other ways and support the protection of their habitat back home in China. Uh, you've mentioned a couple of times this idea of small cages, small containers, small areas that the animals are kept in. So I want to ask you, how does a zoo compare to something like, say, the African Lion Safari, which, you know, uh, promotes the idea that the people are the people that go are in the cages and the animals are, are roaming? Well, there's no doubt that, that some uh, zoos and uh, 
captive animal uh, institutions are better than others. But there's no way that it comes even close uh, from the animal's perspective to being left in its natural habitat. Uh, for instance, we've seen a lot of attention about marine animals in captivity where we have whales that traverse the ocean uh, in their natural life being kept in these tiny pens. And uh, it's similar for these large uh, panda bears, the polar bears we see at the zoo. They're trapped in very small pens. It's that we attempt to mimic in some way uh, the environment, but it comes nowhere close. It's cruel. Imagine being trapped in your bathroom for the rest of your life. It's nowhere near to what the animal will experience. And we see that uh, in the way that the animals respond, uh, signs of depression, animals dying early, uh, failing to breed. So there's no question that wild animals don't belong in captivity. They belong in the wild. And we should be learning about these animals uh, through modern technology, internet, videos, the things that have made uh, the old style zoo obsolete. Nick, Price is the, uh, Nick Wright is the executive director of Animal Justice Canada. Nick, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate your, uh, your um, expertise and your perspective on this story. Thank you. At www.animaljustice.ca is where you can go to learn more information about the organization.